we've all been in that situation where we feel like maybe our relationship has lost its spark. Well, you can get it back. Rebecca Rosenblatt is here and she's going to help us talk through some of the most common mistakes that couples make. She is a registered psychotherapist, a relationship counselor. You are an author and a radio and TV host. Is there anything you don't do? <laughs> My goodness. In fact, you've got a following that stretches not just across Canada, not just across North America, but all the way into Europe. People are so familiar with the uh, counseling that you provide. How did that happen? I guess because we all need relationship help. So it's one of those generic topics that can travel the globe. <laughs> it's, it's very universal, isn't it? It is. Well, what would you say, since you've talked to everybody around the world, What's the most common mistake or reason that couples would need therapy? Well, one of the things is that couples stop feeling safe with each other. So they don't feel safe enough to be their authentic selves. They don't feel safe enough to voice that they, what they need, whether it's their emotional needs or intimacy needs. And they just kind of withdraw into themselves. And That's it's so true. It's like an emotional safety that right, you're talking about. Right. So you have to feel safe enough to be able to talk about what you need, what your hurts are, and um, be able to respond to each other's needs. Um, the other thing is people get into these negative dances over and over again. How many of us have had that argument where we could just kind of record replay and we don't even have to talk so those are some of the things where people struggle so going to therapy it's, it's for the most part it's like going to see uh, a trainer um, you shine a light on, in the basement you know what's there what needs to leave and the tools that are there that can help you um, so really it's not necessarily broken and you're you're really peeling back an onion aren't you because mm -hmm. here's resentment number one it never gets resolved here's resentment number two and by the time you get up here You've forgotten what started the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You kind of have to, do you have to peel back all the layers to get to the root of it? Absolutely. And the interesting part is that the two parties may not even know what's going on with the other party, and they may have entirely different issues, but it's the dance between them, the dynamic that they create together. Well, give us, if you would, give us some tips on how we can rebuild our relationship. Well, one of the first things I ask people to do is go online and take the love languages test. You could love your partner, but if you're not loving them in their first language, they won't even perceive it. And we're not talking about English versus Spanish. <laughs> this is a whole, and it's, and it's so true, so explain yes. it. So there's five love languages. There's acts of service, there's touch, there's gifts, there is words of affirmation, and there's quality time. So let's say yours is acts of service. You show and receive love by acts of service. And if mine is words of affirmation, I can say I love you to, to you like until cows come home, but you may not feel it. And yet you could be doing things for me, but you don't say it often enough, and I could not be feeling it. So it's finding so out. So you're both trying. Hey, mm -hmm. I'm showing you. I'm telling you I love you, but why aren't you hearing me? Absolutely. So that's one of the things to do. I also say to couples that try to find some common interests so you're having fun together and uh, date nights we hear they're important but people go and talk about chores and uh, bills and kids it means at least two hours no kids no chores no bills it's just like if you were on your first date you wouldn't bring all the problems to the table you're trying to impress each other you're having fun you're being charming and it's just about rebuilding that connection do you get joy out of watching couples find those connections again? Absolutely. It's one of my favorite things. It's why I do what I do. I do these uh, couples intensives. So over a weekend, couples will come. Sometimes they are really troubled and at the verge of getting a divorce. Other times they just want to build their relationship up. And it's so transforming in those two days to see the relationship transform completely. Um, I cry with them. Oh, that's wonderful. It's and amazing to can watch. Can they sustain it? Absolutely, if they're willing to do what it takes. So it's not just about uh, giving them this transformation. I also teach them how to maintain it moving forward because anybody can have that spectacular week and it's just like you can go away for a vacation, but are you going to sustain it? So I give them tools to sustain it. And over the next eight weeks, they have to practice eight different skills until they stick. But there's lots of stuff for them to do. And once they get hooked, they don't want to go back. If a relationship is in trouble, in the bedroom, mm -hmm. but fine everywhere else, or, or vice versa. Does that happen where the, there's a problem over here, but this over here is fine? Or does it kind Gen of tend to be everywhere? Mm -hmm. 
generally, if there's trouble outside the bedroom, it will express itself in the bedroom because it's the ultimate body language. And even though we shouldn't use intimacy as a way of rewarding and punishing, people do that too often. There's lots of studies that show that people do that. So sometimes it's sort of like throwing out the baby of the bathwater when you do that. <laughs> do men and women want different things, do you think? Um, not necessarily, but there is some truth to that, that women may use, um, uh, men may use sex to connect, and women may need to connect before they can have sex. But it isn't across the board. There are many women who just want to go straight to the goods, and guys who may just want to connect. And in fact, guys do want connection, even though it may not feel that way, because we hug each other. Um, for guys, that may be the only place where they can experience touch. Wow. Do you find people tend to behave in their own relationships like they watch their parents behave? Do they have to break those habits? Mm -hmm, absolutely. So we learn to do relationships based on what we saw when we were growing up, particularly between five to eight years of age. That's when love maps and erotic templates develop. Um, so most people end up replicating the mistakes of their parents. That said, there are people who say, oh my God, I do not want that relationship, and they may go to the other extreme, particularly when they overcompensate with the kids because they didn't get attention. That's where you see the helicopter parenting. But yes, we do bring those habits, uh, but we can break those habits because we shouldn't think that we keep getting progressively worse and worse and worse because we'd all be serial killers <laughs> right now. <laughs> but we can break the cycle. You've got a new show coming up. Tell us about that. I am very, very excited right here on CH, and it's um, Sex with Rebecca. It's all about intimacy, and we're not just talking about the physical part, but we're talking about the connection and the physical part and keeping it fun and exciting and safe and healthy. The sky's the limit. And also seeing uh, what is possible. Lots of people have no clue what's possible and one person's ceiling, maybe another person's floor. So just kind of knowing what to do, what's fun. And for couples, it's great because they can say, hey, honey, what do you think about that? Takes the onus off them and it gets them talking. That's what I find in my previous shows. It just got people talking. People know you, they feel comfortable talking about these things with you, which is so great. So if someone watching right now says, you know what, I think we need some help, how can they reach out to you? They can just go to my website, um, talkwithrebecca.com or relationshipandsexuality.com. There's a link to me, and there's tons of free downloads, articles that they can use, um, you know, tips on all sorts of stuff, but they can get in touch with me, and I just love working on miracles with people. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here today. Great news and about the show. Good luck with everything. We'll be watching. Thank you. Very excited about yours and mine. <laughs>